So, in this process, so what is the, the basic principle in gauge heat generation? Is resistance heating, joule heating. So, we will see again physics of these processes. So, what is the main heat generation mechanism? How it is controlled, right? And what are the factors that can influence the, the, the welding characteristics, okay? And what are the factors that influence the heat generation? So, you say this dual heating, but there are a lot of variants, factors that can influence heat generation in this process, right? We will see one by one. So, before that, there are variant, the, the number of types of resistance heating is used in uh, uh, industrial welding processes, okay? It can be resistance spot welding, seam welding, projection welding, uh, butt welding, flash weld welding, resistance upset welding, okay? And, uh, or electrical resistance welding and there are so many types, but the fundamental heat generation mechanism is the same which is joule heating, okay. So, what is joule heating? The, the heat generated when you pass a ampere of I voltage of V over a unit time of T, right. The heat is generated is given by I square R or I times V times T. So, it is difficult to get V all the times, it is easy to measure the resistance. So, we, we always replace with resistance, right. So, so what is the relationship? Hmm? V equal to I R, okay. And then I re, so we replace V with an I R, then it becomes I R square. So, you always remember, so ampere and then volt and second becomes joule, is not it? So, that is from the, the basic definition of the ampere and volt. So, you need to understand that to generate heat. So, that is how we also use uh, you know, water heater, right? So, that is also use the same principle. So, here in the Q is the, the energy per unit time, the time is given if you move joules per second and second to this side it becomes joule, right? Joules per second is what? It is what, right? So, then the, 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 the heat generated in joules, it is nothing but the current square times resistance. And what is this R? What resistance we are talking about here? Electro resistance. So, imagine now I am I want to weld two sheets, okay, something like this. Okay. Somewhere uh, say suppose I want to weld at the middle. So, what are, what is R for in this configuration? Sheet resistance, bulk resistance, that is it. So, R, R of this and R of that will determine the heat generation, yes or no? Say suppose you have an electrode, you use an I conductivity copper, okay. Similarly, you have another electrode on the bottom, is it? And what are the resistance you expect in the circuit? Electro resistance, sheet resistance, that is it? No. Contact resistance, okay, good answer. So, where is the contact resistance here? Between the electrode and plate. Between the plates, exactly, okay. In this case, the main resistance that dictates heat generation is the contact resistance between the plates, okay. So, before that the contact resistance can be generated in various configuration, okay. So, for example, resistance spot welding. So, these are the variants of resistance welding, various types of welds you can expect. There are six major types of process used in a direct resistance heating. Resistance spot welding, so we use in a, in a simple two electrodes to make a, a spot in the weld spot. Again, we will see in the subsequent classes and the resistance seam welding. So, what is seam welding? To make tubes 
in most of the applications in, 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 in tube making is done by resistance seam welding or ERW it is called electrical resistance welding. So, where the sheets are folded and then we pass a current in between the, the interface, the interface heated by the contact resistance and then I do an offset to push it once the heating it is heated up and then we deform the edge to make a continuous seam or we can also instead of having a spot electrode, so you have a two plates and you have an electrode rolled along the interface continuously, you form a continuous seam of welding, okay. Then radial electrical that is resistance seam welding with low frequency or high frequency or you can also use an induction heating, use an, a, a resistance uh, 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 of the, the contact as well as the, the external heating mechanism and you can also increase the heating efficiency or you can also do projection welding okay, or flash butt welding where you form an arc between the two fraying interfaces, you melt and then subsequently do an upset so the molten liquid can go, go away and then you can have an, an, a joint or you can also do simple upset welding by resistant heating. For example, uh, you do not melt, just heat it up to higher temperature and then upset it so that it deforms forms a joint okay. or you can also do percussion welding. So, we look at all these processes in this unit okay. So, what are the, the important uh, the factors that, that control the uh, heat generation and what types of electrodes we use, why we, we use, why should we use this process for what application okay. We all see this uh, in this uh, unit. So, that is what we are going to see in this lesson. So, how uh, the fundamental uh, that governs the welding processes uh, to make uh, uh, such a wells because then we can uh, know improve the well metal property okay. So, first process what we look at it is going to look at is resistance spot welding. As I said it is, it is very widely used in automotive industry resistance spot wells okay. So, all the thin sections they are all welded uh, with resistance spot wells and basically what we do in resistance spot welding is is a simple setup is very extremely simple. So, we have two electrodes okay top electrode and the bottom electrode and generally these electrodes are made with copper or copper alloys okay. So, we use copper because high conductivity right and uh, you know, we can also extract heat from the electrode very effectively because uh, during this process the electrodes do not melt is not it. So, when you pass the current you keep in, a, in the uh, top electrode and bottom electrode and then we attach the sheets to be welded in overlap configuration. What is overlap? Lap okay. So, top of each other something like this and then we fix the electrode on the top and bottom and then we pass a current and during this process we will have to make sure that only the interface melts, we should not be melting the electrode is not it? Then we have a problem, we should not heat up the electrode because we are also applying a force an axial force during this process. So, in this case you make sure that temperature is not increased. So, what do we do? So, we use a copper electrode and we cool the electrode very effectively by circulating water right, it is clear. So, the copper electrode generally we use and then the heat can be transferred very effectively because thermal conductivity of copper is also very high right. So, so we can pass a current and the current can be flowing through the phaying interface. What is phaying? It is a uh, very nice British word, English word, not British word. To fay means to join, okay. Okay, so the faying interface over here, and then we will have to make sure that the current flows, and during this process, if current continuously flows, then you do not have an effective heat generator, is not it? So, we need to have some resistance R. Right. So, what happens when the current actually flows? So, whenever there is a hindrance to the current flow that is resistance is not it. So, that is where the charge accumulates and then the charges can interact can collide and dissipate heat is not it. So, any movement is hindered that means that the energy is dissipated. So, now in this case if a current flows from one electrode to electrode make it positive or negative whatever way right. And generally we use an AC current in resistance spot welding or resistance welding. 
for a very very specific reason. So, we will come back to that later. So, imagine now you have passed an uh, alternating current in every cycle positive and ne negative is changing and sometimes electrons can flow in this direction other, other times electrons can flow in this direction. But ultimately the, the flow of electrons are hindered by the, the various resistance in the system. So, what are the resistance in the system you can explain you, you can expect say when the current is flowing from this direction to this direction from top to bottom. What are the resistance you can explain you can expect. Okay, first resistance is the resistance of the electrode itself. So, in this case say R 1, okay, R 1, R 1, right. So, generally we use high conductivity uh, copper if you use then R 1 is very minimal. Okay. The second resistance you would expect is the resistance between the electrode and the top of the sheet. Similarly, the resistance between the bottom electrode and the bottom sheet. That means a resistance R2, say R1 is say for example copper and then R2 is between copper plus workpiece surface, right. So, this is R2 and then what are the resistance you expect? Okay. So, before that you also have the bulk resistance of the workpiece itself. R 3 and then you may have the resistance between the workpiece that is R 4 which is the contact resistance. Which resistance will be maximum? Obviously, the contact resistance between the two sheets. Okay. Right, so because R1 is as small as possible. Similarly, the R3 resistance of this sheet is not as high as you know, in the R2. Okay, so the maximum resistance you would expect is in between the sheets. So that's where you expect the electrons path is hindered maximum, isn't it? So that's why the R4, the contact resistance, can generate a maximum heat. Okay, so that we can make it for our own benefit because we will have to melt the interface. Okay, if the charge carriers are hindered at the interfaces then the heat can be accumulated at the interface and that can lead to heat generation ultimately melting off the interface. Okay, so, in these four resistances the main rate controlling resistance which is actually from the well nugget is the R4 the contact resistance. Okay, is contact resistance not a bulk resistance? Okay, so bulk resistance is a material property. Okay, contact resistance is depending on the surface roughness. Okay, and the surface condition. Okay, and then how hard you press each other, isn't it? The load you give actually. These all influence the contact resistance. Okay, the surface conditions for example, you may do on a bare sheet and in another case you use on a, on a coated sheet. So, then the contact resistance is entirely different. Similarly, you use now say the 2 kilo Newton road in other case 5 kilo Newton road which will have a maximum contact resistance. So, obviously 2 kilo Newton because when you increase the load you also decrease the or you also plastically deform you reduce the surface roughness. So, you are bringing close to each other is not it right. So, you change the load, you also change the contact resistance. So, the contact resistance in never the heat generation is a function of various parameters which involves the, the material surface roughness, material surface conditions, the load you apply okay? and then that will determine the heat generation. So, if you look at the temperature distribution I put in this case in the, in the, in the other axis, the maximum heating would happen at the interface. Isn't it? So, this is welding temperature as function of distance. So, you would expect some or other heating at the top of the surface okay, because the R2 is also in a, in a contact, uh, it is not a bulk resistance. But luckily, the heat whatever you form at the R2 is extracted, is not it, by the water cooling. So, the temperature will not reach as high as in the interface. Okay. And similarly, 
the R1 is minimal the copper resistance of the copper if you use a copper electrode. So, you would not expect any contribution from the R1 to this process and same goes with R3, R3 also is very minimal because that is the bulk resistance of the sheet you are welding. So, if you look at this entire uh, the setup resistance part welding, the main rate controlling resistance is the R4, yes the R4 leads to the heat generation here accumulation of the interface and then and because of that you start melting first the interface and then it will grow when you form a weld covering both the sheets and that is what you known as nugget, well nugget right. We will see, so it is clear right, so how uh, uh, we control the heat generation, so heat generation during resistance spot welding is, is actually controlled by the R4. The R4 is the contact resistance between two welding interfaces, yes it is clear, good. So, this is what happens uh, if you look at an, an, an I put on a schematic again. So, you have a, a, a top electrode and bottom electrode and you keep uh, two electrodes. So, basically so you need to apply an a compression uh, load and the seats are placed in an overlap configuration. You pass a current and simultaneously you also apply a load and then you start melting at the interface and then the interface would grow and make a continuous well joint. So, now the size of the weld is determined by the thickness right and the contact resistance as well as the load you apply and the welding time is not it right. So, the thickness is a mass, mass effect ok, so Q would be function of the mass effect and then the current basically the R, R is a contact resistance. So, R can be R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4. So, you can neglect R1 and R3 and R2 also you can neglect significantly because you are uh, extracting the heat. So, the R4, the R4 is again a function of the load as well as for a given surface conditions the R4 can only be changed by sigma by the load right, the how much you load apply is not it because the material is selected already right. So, that you cannot change for a given material the the actual uh, the uh, well nugget size is determined by the current you give and then the R which is in turn determined the R4, R4 in turn determined by the load right, it is clear and then you have T what is T? The time of welding, how much time you spend. So, based on these three factors, we can calculate the weld nugget size, ok. So, the size of the weld, right. So, because, so these factors the current, the R4, R, R4 and then in turn sigma and then welding time will determine the amount of liquid you form at the interface. So, if you look at the temperature distribution again, if you look at it, so you will have maximum heating, so the resistance you expect at the interface, therefore the maximum temperature at the interface, right, it is clear. You will you have minimum heating because you have a, a minimum resistance for the flow of current, is not it? And you also have an, a small variation in the temperature and this is due to your R2, oh sorry it is what do you do that interface I, what I give uh, R2 and this is R4, that is clear right. So, the main rate controlling is R4, R4 can be changed for a surface condition if surface is fixed a material is given R4 can be changed by the load and then other factors will influence the, the welding is the current and the welding tank, right, it is clear, good. So, if you look at a, a, a cross section of a, a typical resistance spot well, this is how it look like. So, the electrode, so I, we made an, a cross section and parallel to the, the axial direction of the electrode 
and uh, you have electrode, you have a cavity inside to have a water circulation, is not it? Right, and then you, you place in a sheet to be welded in overlap configuration and you apply an, a load and the current and during this process the, the heat is generated at the interface and the interface would start melting and then forming a well nugget, very beautiful well nugget. At the center of the electrode and surrounding area, right, it is clear, good. So, this is a typical well thermal cycle we follow, what is well thermal cycle I said, okay, it is because we, all, we always need heat, right, we pass a current and simultaneously we also apply some load. And in a conventional resistance point well thermal cycle, so you have a current versus force, generally we have a such a curve. So, this is done to 1.2 mm sheet in overlap configuration. Right. So, what you do is, so once you have an overlap and you start first applying a load, upon um, applying an, uh, a load which is required to achieve a required um, the, the contact resistance, then you will start passing the current. Okay. So, for 1.2 mm sheet, in this case I used a 5.5 kilo amperes, kilo amperes, is not it? In a conventional GMAW, what is the current we use generally? Okay, not more than 300, 400 amperes. Whereas here we can go as high as 10, 10 kilo amperes. So in a, the equipment what we have in our lab, we can go up to 10 kilo amperes. Okay. So in order to get an, a, an a good well diameter, okay, good well diameter is determined by some factors. We'll see in subsequent lectures. Okay. Suppose if you want to achieve an, an uh, acceptable diameter, so in this case we can go up to 5.5 kilo amperes with a load of 3.5 kilo newtons. Okay, so we apply a 3.5 kilo newton load, and during this process we also apply a current of 5.5 kilo amperes, and then uh, you decrease the current. You keep the load intact for some time so that uh, metal solidifies. Okay, otherwise, if you take it off, and the liquid can separate out. So you keep the load for some time more, and then ultimately you form a well nugget. And if you look at the entire thermal, the entire well cycle, in this case, 340 milliseconds. Okay, close to 350 milliseconds. Right. So that is a very fast process, isn't it? So in this case, in a resistance pot drilling, in most of the cases we use AC. Alternating current. In this case, blue is current, pink is <coughs> that is what I said 5.5 kilo amperes. Okay, so, this is uh, amperage and this is load. Okay. So, most of the cases we use alternating current for a very specific reasons. Again, physics why we use alternating current here, and if you use DC, there is a problem. Okay. So, we can now as now assume that we use only AC and we will see why only AC in later classes. So, generally the current is from a kilo ampere to we can go up to 10,000 kilo ampere, even much beyond that, okay, based on the equipment capability and our need. As I said, the contact resistance determines heat generation. So, or the contact resistance inversely proportional to the load, load increases or decreases, is not it? Why? because we are bringing plates close to each other. If you are putting, if you are pressuring, pressing more, we are bringing the plates close to each other. And because of a very tiny area, what you look at, and we also have an electrode which is effectively transferring the heat from the weld, and this electrode itself is water cooled. The cooling rates, what we achieve when the weld solidifies, it can be several thousand Kelvin per second. Okay, the cooling rates can be as high as 10,000, 2,000 Kelvin per second. Okay, so entire weld you can touch in 300 milliseconds, right? So if you are uh, uh, cooling in such a high cooling rates in a steel, obviously in most cases you will get only martensite microstructure. So weld can be very brittle, but 
we will have to live with that. We will have to play around with our welding parameters such a way that we achieve a good weld metal property. Okay, we will also touch upon some of the aspects when you when you study that. So, you can now assume that the, the main characteristic of this process uh, in this case the heat is generated by the contact resistance which determines heat generation the R4. Okay. And then <coughs> we also apply a load and the load can change the contact resistance. And then the welding time and the current would determine the welding size. We use mostly alternating current. The reason is, yeah, so it is known as the Peltier effect. For next class, you can come up with the answer. So, what is Peltier effect? Okay. So, next class we will discuss why we use only AC, okay, because of this effect. And then, the because of uh, the, uh, the effective heating, uh, cooling done by the, uh, the electrode, the the, the cooling rates can be uh, extremely high in thousands of Kelvin per second. Yes, it is clear? Good. So, we will stop with this and then we will see in next class.